So we're starting our coverage here at Goldstock Analyst Day, and the mastermind behind the day joins me now. John Duty, good to be with you. Well, great to see you, Daniela, and thanks for coming down out of the cold north. <laughs> Absolutely. No worries, John. Happy to be here. Uh, now, before we start talking, I have to clear the air on something. Your pimple comment, which caused waves through the precious metals <laughs> industry when you, when you compared the gold market to a pimple. Have your thoughts changed uh, since no, two weeks ago? I, I continue to believe there's a lot of pressures building up on the supply side of on the demand side of gold that are not showing up yet in the price and uh, with the uh, with with the two major producers of gold uh, countries China and and Russia not exporting any and 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 then China buying seemingly more than its its actual production just sucking gold in from the the rest of the world most of it came from the ETFs that uh, uh, that have lost a lot, a lot of their gold that at some point it's going to show up in prices and it just hasn't yet so there's there must still be a, an imbalance between the supply and demand but that'll get cured right and some people are saying that it seems that gold's having an identity crisis now because it's not really responding as a safe haven especially with the turmoil we're seeing in in Greece and whatnot Ukraine uh, what do you what do you have to say for that. Well, you know, gold has been holding steady in the 1200. So, in a sense, you know, part of his, the uh, part of the role of a safe haven is to protect the value of money. So it, it's doing that. And if you were in any other country other than the United States, gold has gone up in value. You know, the the ruble has fallen by 50 percent. Mm -hmm. So in in Russia, the value of gold is doubled. The price of gold is doubled, and and uh, so this is true around the rest of the world. That every it was a bull market last year in every currency for gold, but the U.S. dollar. Now, John, we're starting off a, a slew of mining conferences with yours today, Goldstock Analyst Day. Then we have BMO. Then we have PDAC. So with three back-to-back -back conferences, which I know you attend, uh, what do you feel the sentiment is like on the floor? It, it, does it still feel heavy to you? Um, I, it, it feels optimistic, but you know, people have shot themselves in the foot the last couple of years saying that things are going to be better this coming year, and then they didn't. So, so I, I think it's optimistic, and, and uh, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. And, mm -hmm. and of course, we haven't ha heard any of our speakers here today yet, so yeah. uh, we'll have to judge their, their optimism. Well, uh, many expect there to be, we've already seen merger and acquisition activity in the mining industry so far this year, and we expect more throughout the year. And I guess some investors are wondering if there is M&A happening, are you better off short term as an investor investing in the junior or long term in the senior? Well, I'm basically a long term investor. So I, I think that and you, you, you never can really know in advance that a deal is going to get done. You can spot good value and the mining companies can spot good value. But sometimes they're hesitant to act until somebody else does. You know, it's like if nobody goes first, then then the mining companies can, the larger mining co companies can let the juniors sort of move along, push along, and see how they do before they make their move. So, but I expect we have four companies in the top ten that are here producing, mm -hmm. that are, are going to be producing in, in this year or next year, and they're all here presenting, and and uh, they're all fully financed, which is unique. And you know, there's, there's so many juniors out there that can't get a, any money to build. To mine, but these guys are all fully financed, and, and three begin production this year, one in 2016. I think any one of them could be could be taken over, and but which one I don't know. And I, as you know, I we have a top 10 portfolio, right. and that's how you minimize the risk of any any one company. Well, on that note, you have your top 10 portfolio. What's your criteria? Uh, well, to, to get to be covered by GSA Pro, you have to be you either have a feasibility study and and, and s s uh, full feasibility, not a PEA, so showing that you're going to produce more than 100,000 ounces a year, or in production at more than 100,000 ounces a year. So, in the low end, that's 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 the coverage criteria, and we cover about 60 stocks. Now, John, let's talk economy for a second. You're an economist by trade, and I would like to get your thoughts on the global central bank uh, situation right now. Now, it seems that almost everyone has adopted this mantra of everyone for themselves. We saw it with the Swiss earlier this year. France, Germany weren't expecting uh, that move when they uh, unpegged their currency. But do you expect to see more central bank surprises this year? Well, uh, most of them are already doing it. And, and, you know, the currencies are all down versus the dollar. I mean, as, as, you know, as people like to say that sometimes the dollar is the best horse in the glue factory. But, but uh, and, and it definitely is, but the, the euro is, is going, going, going down on its own, which is good for Europe. You know, at a dollar 14 versus last year was about a dollar 40 for a euro. 
Um, Europe is, is going to benefit this year from more tourism from the U.S. Uh, they're going to get more exports because their prices are, uh, in foreign nations are now more competitive because of the lower euro. So basically, countries would like their currencies to slip lower. Even Japan, I mean, uh, even Ch Japan, of course, is much down, but China, is uh, their, they, their currency is falling. So that, you know, as long as the U.S. is willing to stand tall and be the benchmark, everybody else is willing to slide down against it. Now, will the U.S. react to that? Eh, probably not. All right, John. Now, I know you have a busy day ahead, so I'll let you go. But before I do, besides gold, what are you liking these days? Well, boats. You know. <laughs> I knew you were going to give me that answer, John. But uh, also... There's a gold boat out here at the pier, you I know. know. It's, it's Steven Spielberg's, right? <laughs> no, this is, this is a new Palmer Johnson. It's 165 feet. I don't know whose it is or what the name is. Spielberg's boat is parked behind yeah. it. Well, it's we're, only 280 We're going to go check it out at the end of the day. Um, you also have Jim Grant coming up, right? Keynote speaker. Yes, right here. Jim Grant's his new yeah. book is here, and, and Jim is a gold bug, and uh, he's a great uh, discipline of the uh, uh, discipliner of the central banking, uh, er the errors of their ways. And of course, his, his new book basically uh, uh, is, is about the depression of 20 and 21 that cured itself. Mm -hmm. In other words, the government didn't do anything back then. They didn't have the tools to do anything. And by golly, after two years, the thing was over. And then we had the roaring 20s. So uh, it's an interesting analysis and comparison between activism government in the 30s, where it took basically World War II to get out of the Depression. And in many cases, now we're still in a depression. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so it, it'll be an interesting uh, talk. He's a lively speaker. And, and uh, I hear you're going to interview him. Yeah, we, we will. And, I, and so are you optimistic for the U.S. economy? Yeah, I think so. I think we're, we're on the way out. But there's a lot of people without jobs, without full-time jobs, and the number of people that aren't counted anymore because they stopped looking is, is huge. So it's, it's unfortunate. It's a, it's a situation where, you know, the, the, the doing well are doing better, and the, some of the middle people are doing okay, but there's still a, a, a huge under, undercurrent of people that aren't doing well at all. All right, John, well, I'll let you get back to your show. Thanks so much for joining right. us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And we'll have more coverage uh, for you from Goldstock Analyst Day, so be sure to stay tuned to Kitco.com. Thanks for watching.